G'day, Starlo here. I'm on or actually in the Ovens River at Bright in Victoria and I'm doing one of my favourite things. I'm wading small streams with my little split cane fly rod, a three weight, casting flies for wild trout in small water. I've been pretty lucky over the years and I've travelled all around the world and I've caught some pretty amazing fish including things like big tuna and marlin. But you know what? I get as much of a buzz out of this as anything else. A lot of people don't really understand that and I'm hoping I might be able to help explain it to you today. I've got a chest mounted GoPro on here so I'm going to show you this style of fishing from my point of view so you can see what's actually happening, see the challenges, see the excitement. Let's hope we can catch a couple of fish. Come with me. The ovens is up a little bit, running fast and has a tinge of colour at the moment. It's actually a bit of a challenge for the three weight. It's almost too much water for it, to be honest. So I'm pretty keen to get into one of the smaller feeder creeks that join the ovens. These are generally better suited to the little split cane rod. I'm casting a dry fly and dropper rig with a small nymph it's suspended about 30 or 35 centimetres under a nice buoyant dry fly. You really need to cover the water with a prospecting rig like this. Fish every likely looking lie and even the less likely ones. As I push further upstream the nature of the creek shifts from one bend and run to the next and there are plenty of places for a trout to lie and wait for drifting food to come down to it. It's just a matter of moving quietly and hoping to cross paths with a hungry one. Oh, take on the dry. Little one. Yes, got him. He's a little fella. Took the nymph. Just wet my hand. A little rainbow. Oh, how pretty. Mm. What a gorgeous fish. Really important to wet your hands to cool them down. Look at that. Oh, it's a lively little chap. Yeah, just picked up that nymph in the run there. Gorgeous. Still got the par marks on the side. And he's away. With one little trout under my belt, I'm optimistic about it being a pretty good day. Hmm, I thought there would have been one in there. I'm wet wading and the water, while it's cool, isn't at all unpleasant on a warm spring day like this. Right, come on, we're due for another one. Mm. Got him. Like a brownie. Not a bad one either. Oh, he's a chunky little one. Nice little brownie. A little bit slabby that one. Could do with a decent feed. It's probably not loaded with food this creek. Which makes them a bit op opportunistic. Saw him come after it. Come on, come on, come on. 
Oh, he came up again. Just not getting the light drift. I don't think he's going to come back now. Oh, I thought he would come that time. No, he's awake up to me. Next pool might be a nice brownie up in here. Come on, I know you're in there. Oh, yes, he took that so fast. Big silver flash. Well, a little silver flash. <laughs> uh, what are you? Another rainbow? Steady, mate, steady. The thumbprint like patches on the flanks of these fish are called par marks, and they're generally thought to indicate that the fish hasn't yet spawned for the first time. Oh, I thought that went there. Sometimes you just gotta strike on spec. Oh, this will be a fish. No. Even the kookaburras are laughing at my efforts now. They clearly know something. Oh, oh it was a good fish. Took the nymph, didn't get him. Don't think he'll come back. That looked like a brownie, about a pound. Damn, damn, damn. Got him. Oh, that's a bit better fish. Little brownie, I think. Woohoo! He's going to town. Oh, he's going down in the current. <laughs> oh, this gear's so light. So much fun. Rainbow one cast, brown the next. Come on, mate. He's got below me now. I'll have to lead him into the bank. Lame there on the grass. Oh, what a beauty. Lovely fish. No par marks on this brown. It's a fully mature fish that's probably spawned at least once, I reckon. Neatly pinned, too. Okay. Hook came out so easily. And away he goes. I was getting amongst them pretty regularly now, both browns and rainbows, and a few slightly bigger ones, too. Look at that. Beautiful. He's still got par marks too, and he's quite a solid fish. Get him over here in some light so you can see him better. What a gorgeous fish. Wow, got a real log jam here. I'm going to have to climb over that. See how we go. Goodness me. Oh. 
Oh. I made it over the top and the water beyond looked even better. And who should I find up there but my good mate and fellow Fishertopian, Steve Peach. Peachy's right into his short line Euro nymphing and it was no surprise that he was braining them. Steve kindly offered to give me a quick lesson in this deadly technique and I was all ears. So what I'm doing here is uh, European nymphing. This is a fairly short line situation. I've got a weighted nymph on the point of the line here with a tungsten bead. I've got about six feet of uh, very fine tippet and then I've got what's called a sighter, which is this coloured material here that allows me to see the line and that's my indicator basically. So what I'm doing when I'm casting upstream, I'm letting the nymph drift down and I'm watching that sighter for it to tighten and uh, or, or to stop or move in an unusual way and then I set the hook and strike and it'll either be the bottom, a rock or it'll be a fish. So I'm just doing, casting a lot of very short drifts, the flies in the water almost all the time and if, if something happens or I get to the end of the drift then I just do set the hook and cast again, place it up there. Now it's really important with this that um, you manage the rod tip and you manage the line carefully. What you want to have is just a slight controlled amount of slack in the line. Peachy then very generously handed me one of his specialist outfits to give it a go myself under his expert so you guidance. Imagine, if you watch the end of your sighter, mm. whatever your sighter is doing, if it's moving up and down, yeah. then your nymphs are doing the same thing. That's why it's really important with your, with your uh, drift to just get that rod tip smooth and get the whole drift as smooth as you can, as soon as you can, mm. so that you're not, you're not pulling the fly up and down in the water column. Yeah, great, that's very good. It looked like one, didn't it? Yeah, it was. Really? Yeah. Yes. That was up high in the water. That yep. Is, that, what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, really early in the drift. Oh, early in the drift? Yep. I would have missed that on my earlier casts because I was letting the cider fall on the water. Yeah, absolutely. What an eye-opener this little session was, and it felt pretty good to break my duck on a new method, even if it was only a little one. <laughs> Woo, hopefully the first of many on the Euronymph. Well done, mate. This technique's well worth learning, and you'll find heaps more about it on Steve's wonderful YouTube channel, Peachy Fly Fishing. Check it out and subscribe. All right. It's good fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. You saw that take? We did. Bigger. I went on to catch another half a dozen or so trout under Steve's able guidance and I suspect I'll be doing a bit more of this caper in future. I can only imagine how effective it can be when you iron out some of the technicalities and little nuances, which are things that Steve really explores in his YouTube channel. Like I said, make sure you check it out and subscribe while you're at it. Beautiful little rainbow. Mm.
All too soon it was time for me to hand Peachy's gear back to him and move on. But as I travelled further up the river and looked back, he was still hooking them one after the other. He's really got that Euronymphing sorted out. I had new water to explore and some of it was well off the beaten track, including a tiny overgrown feeder creek that I'd been given a heads up about by Robbie Alexander of Robbie Fishing, another great YouTube channel. Mind you, I had to negotiate a few local hazards to get there, including this character. But as I finally broke through to the water, I was pretty excited about what lay ahead. This looked good. So I've come into this little side creek and it's actually up and a little bit dirty. We had uh, a bit of a cloud burst up in the ranges and it is discoloured but I think it's still going to be quite fishable and I must admit I've swapped over from my precious split cane bamboo fly rod to um, a somewhat less expensive but still very nice little airflow seven foot six uh, three weight I think that'll be pretty good in here. It's tight water, I'm gonna to have to do some bow and arrow casting. Bow and arrow casts are really useful in tight water. They're achieved by carefully grasping the bottom fly, pulling it back to load the rod, and releasing the fly to send it on its way. I'll be very surprised if there's not fish in here. I've got a good feeling about it. There's a few insects buzzing around too. It's actually quite humid. I'll just start short here in the tail of the pool. Don't want to be walking up and spooking fish ahead of you. I'm just using a dry fly with a nymph underneath it. Nice short cast, just feeling my way up into the pool. Oh, nearly fell over. Slippery rocks. Okay, we're getting up into the more meaningful areas now. This looks really good. You just never know when you're on a new creek like this what it's going to produce. Slowly lengthening my casts out a little bit now. And they might take either the dry or the nymph. I've only got the nymph about 30 centimetres under the dry. Because it's very shallow water. You don't want to be hanging up on the bottom. And you've got a sense of expectation. We'll see if it's misplaced. Got to be careful, even with these little wild fish, if that fly drags faster than the current flow, they won't take it. Got to get a dead drift happening. Maybe some roll casts up into there. Come on, there's got to be a fish in there, surely. Oh yes, and he took the dry and I missed him. Nice little rainbow by the looks of it and I managed to put the fly up in the tree. Okay, that's come out. <laughs> All right. Now, get a nice long drift, give him a good look at it. I don't think he'll come back. Nope. Oh, that one did though, and I got him. Woohoo, on the dry, that is so good. Oh, I love this. Just a, a rod and a half length of line outside the tip. Beautiful little rainbow, tiny fish, but who cares? It's so nice. And there he is on the little, little dry. I've chosen a dry with a nice bright pink wing because it's making it easier. For me to see it. So the clouds have come over and it's actually quite low light at the moment, even though it's only mid-afternoon. There we go. Beautiful! All right, let's see if he's got some mates. 
constantly get tangles doing all this sort of creative casting in these tight corners. This one looks like it'll come out. Yep, that's all right. Now I'm just going to dry this fly using this Amadou patch. It's just a really absorbent material. You just squeeze the fly in there and it'll take most of the moisture out of it. And then I might just add a little tiny bit of gink floatant as well. Don't overdo it. You don't want to drown the fly. Just get some on your fingertips and just tease out the the fibres in the fly and then I'd like to just run a little bit on the leader up in front of the fly as well just to make sure that's floating. Alright, hopefully we're floating again. I reckon there's going to be a fish in here. It's just a matter of whether I'm good enough to get a fly into the water because um, behind me and above me it's just an absolute tangle. We can't throw a line back into that. Oh dear. Alright. Stop complaining. It's why the fish are here. Because it's a tough spot. Let's see if we can do a little roll. There we go. Ooh, half expected to get one then. Roll him up a little bit further into the current. Yep, got him. Oh, dropped him. He took the dry. Gee, he came up slowly like a brown. I don't know what that was. Wow. Oh, and he took it again. There are so many fish in here. That was literally under the rod tip. Oh, and again. This is crazy stuff. No way. How do I miss him that many times? Probably different fish each time too. Oh, oh! They're splatting at it, but they're not taking it really well. Wow, this is amazing short-range fishing. Uh, he's finally wised up, I think. One more go. No. Damn. All right. I know there's plenty of fish in here. It's just a matter of working away at it. Always just hook your flies up again when you're going to move through this sort of country or they'll just end up caught in everything. All right, I've got to climb through that lot now. Great. Oops, stick. getting tangled up so much I'm half thinking about just getting rid of the nymph and just going for the just a dry fly because they've all seemed to have been coming up on the dry so far probably do that in a minute give it a little bit more of a run well that'll depend on how tangled it is this time now I'm going to take this nymph off how good does this one look? Yes, got him! Oh, had to be one up there. Woo <laughs> Came up for the dry, no problems at all. Oh, I don't need the nymph. What perfect fish. They're so willing. I don't think they've seen too many flies up in here. Off you go, mate. All right. I reckon we'll get another one out of this hole. Dry the fly out with a bit of a false cast. Put it in again. And that's a better fish. That is a good fish. Whoa. Oh, that was a brownie and he got off. That was a beautiful fish. That thing had to be a pound and a half, pound and three quarters. He was going to give me some. He would have gone down there and through under that tree. Oh my gosh, this is a good spot.
There's another one. Oh, that's another reasonable fish, not as big as that last one. It's another brownie. Oh, wow. Look at that beautiful brown trout. Tell you what, the one I just lost was at least half as big again. How many fish are in here? What a gorgeous fish. I might even keep a couple of these if I just get one, one or two a little bit bigger than that. Take them home for a meal. <laughs> There's no shortage of fish in here, that's for sure. Woo! Okay, mate. Off you go. Watch that fly closely. Oh, yes. Oh, nice fish. He's gone in under there. Oh, got him out. <laughs> When I say nice fish, in this kind of water, that little rainbow is a stunning fish. Woo, he went so hard. Just a matter of getting that right drift, and you get them. Oh, and he's away. Good stuff. What a wonderful session that's been. I started out in the Ovens River with my little three weight split cane fly rod and I've ended up here on one of the feeder streams of the ovens using my three weight fiberglass rod. What a bonus it was in the middle of the day to run into Steve Peach here on the water and get a masterclass lesson in Euro nymphing. How effective is that technique? But no matter how you fish, these are just wonderful places to be. These high country streams chasing wild trout, they don't have to be big for it to be a lot of fun. I hope that by watching this, you've been able to understand a little bit about what it is that makes me passionate about this kind of fishing. I'll catch you next time. Tight lines.